confidence tricks are tricks that are played by uh, nefarious people to try and, uh, and get people to, to give them over their money. A lot of the really famous scams work because people aren't able to actually understand the mathematics behind them. And you're all great at mathematics, so hopefully you wouldn't be fooled by any of them, but who knows, let's, let's see. Um, so we're going to be looking at some of these scams today for educational purposes only, right? I'm not expecting you to go out there and try and make lots of money. You wouldn't anyway, because you're all decent, respectable kind of people. But educational purposes only, so that you won't be fooled in the future and you'll be able to tell your friends if they come along and say, I've got this really wonderful proposition somebody's offering me, you can go, nah, don't be silly. The math says that's a bad idea. So you won't be fooled by them in the future. The first one we're going to look at is something called the pyramid scam. And a pyramid scam works very simply like this. I say to you, uh, I've got a wonderful way to make a lot of money. So what you do is, uh, if you uh, all pay me a pound, um, then you can join my pyramid scheme. And what you need to do is you then need to go off and you need to ask six of your friends to join the pyramid scheme. And to join that, they all give you a pound each. So you're going to get six pounds for that. And then those six friends have got to then ask another six of their friends to join up and give them a pound. And basically what happens is that the money then moves up through the different layers in the pyramid. Now, it seems a marvellous way to, to, to make money. You're just giving a very small amount of money, the pound to join the scheme, and yet you're going to get a lot of money from all the other people joining the scheme. The reason that pyramid scams are illegal is because they will always collapse. There will always be a large number of people who are left with no money, having invested money, but no money to, to give through. You have six at this level, 36 at this level, and so on. It grows as six to the power n, where n is the kind of layer within the pyramid. By the time you get up to, to layer 11, uh, 11 steps into the pyramid, the number of people in there is actually greater than the population of the United States of America. So even if you were to be able to recruit every single person in America uh, to, 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 to join into your pyramid scheme, you still wouldn't be able to, to make money from it. So this is something called geometric growth. It starts off small and it doubles and doubles and doubles and doubles, or in this case, it increases by six times six times six times six at each level. And uh, this geometric growth, as it's called, uh, underpins a whole load of different uh, things that, that happen in the, the natural world, but they're also the mathematics that proves that these schemes uh, just won't work, and that's why they're made illegal. And just as a, a little bit of interest, it's related to something called Ponzi schemes, and Ponzi schemes have been in the news a lot recently because in America there was a big court case where a guy called Bernard Madoff actually admitted to running a Ponzi scheme. It's actually named after a guy called Charles Ponzi, who was the first person to kind of uh, publicly to try and, uh, and do one of these scams in America. The Ponzi scheme kind of works like this, but as well as paying money to join the scheme, you also pay money directly to the person at the very top of the pyramid. So Mr. Ponzi would always get a, a little cut of it. So somebody, if they were paying £100 to join the scheme, would give £99 to the person who recruited them and a pound to Mr. Ponzi. So there was always enough money flowing up uh, that Ponzi was actually able to live, live a very affluent life and, until the police got up with them, uh, swimming pools, cars and all those sorts of things. So if somebody comes along with a kind of scheme that, that sounds like this and it might not necessarily be uh, just paying money, it might be selling things on, very often you need to think about the mathematics behind it. If you're expected to, to get a number of different a number of other people to join you, then that becomes a problem. Similarly, this works with chain letters. That's how chain letters work. Chain letters say, please send this letter on to six of your friends. That's exponential growth, geometric growth. And therefore, it's very difficult in the end to be able to get uh, a whole load of people to actually reply to those chain letters. One of the things that uh, is important in a confidence trick is that you're, you're giving somebody something that they, they feel that they want. And in the pyramid scam, it's how to, how to make money from giving a very small amount of money and getting a large amount of money in return. In this case, what I'm going to try to persuade you to buy is, is this. Um, this uh, device here uh, is made of a very special crystal. Uh, it's a crystal called Corbomite. And uh, Corbomite actually works to amplify people's extrasensory perception, their ESP. So it actually works by uh, amplifying your personal aura biofield, which allows you to create a non-corporeal interaction with causal engrams. And what that basically means is that if you hold this device, it boosts your psychic ability and allows you to be able to 
to, to predict things in the future that you wouldn't have been able to do if you didn't have uh, access to this. So can I have somebody to, to come up and just to, to demonstrate the power of this, uh, this psychic amplifier? And the way I'm going to demonstrate that is by using these uh, things called ESP cards. You might have seen them in films like Ghostbusters. So there are a whole series of different symbols. There's squares, triangles, wavy lines, and so on. What you need to do is you need to hold this psychic amplifier, all right? So I'm going to try and get you to use your amplified psychic powers to be able to predict when cards are going to match. You kind of be able to, to use your intuition for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of shuffle the cards up a little bit. Um, I'll spread it through and tap, tap the back of one of the cards, just any card that you fancy. Cut the cards there. Uh, give it another tap somewhere else like that. Happy with that? Kind of shuffled up. So I'm just going to deal it into one, two, three, four, five. Five powers like that. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to eliminate cards one at a time until we've got just two cards left on the table. And you're going to try to, to use your psychic amplifier to match those cards together. So if it's a circle in a circle um, or whatever. But you've got to use your intuition. So there are five cards in each. I'll give you four chances. It's up to you. Uh, one swap in this pile and three swaps on this one. One, two, three. Okay, so we can get rid of those cards. So there's now four cards left. I'll give you three swaps. What do you want to do? Two on that one, three on that one. Two on that. Two on one that. On you, that. you sure? Yes. One, one on this, yes. and two on that. Okay, so that's your psychic amplifier, psychically amplifying. Three cards left. Two swaps. Mm -hmm. One on that. Two on the. Two on this. One. One on this. Yes, sir. Which one? One on, one on this. One on that one, and one on that one. In case we get rid of those, last cards left. One swap one card could make a difference here. What's your psychic amplifier telling you to do? Which one to swap? This one. To swap that one. Okay, so we get rid of those. Right, so that card is a star. What do you think the chances are, using the psychic amplifier, that that card is also going to be a star? Well, given that I'm selling you the psychic amplifier, I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. Would you be surprised? You managed to match the cards using the psychic amplifier. But it's a really good psychic amplifier because not only that, you managed to match those two cards, you managed to match those two cards, you managed to match those two cards, and you managed to match those two cards as well. And all because of the fact that you have my Carbamite psychic amplifier. Thank you very much. How many of you would now buy my psychic amplifier? Is it really a psychic amplifier or is it just a knickknack I picked up in a shop? What do you think? It's a knickknack. But then, how, how can you explain what happened? Maths, yes. What you have uh, is, to begin with, the cards are stacked in a particular order. So the, the same pattern repeats. Um, so if it's a, a square, then there's a square five cards further up. If the next one's a circle, the next one's a circle, and so on. So you, you, you pile them like that. And then all that cutting the cards doesn't really do anything to change the order of the, for the mathematics that we're using. Then. What you actually end up with is, when you deal the five cards down, you've got one pile that's going from card one, two, three, four, five, and the other pack that's going from, from number five, four, three, two, one. So they're actually working in the opposite to one another. One is in one order, and the other one's in the opposite order. So what we have, for example, if we had three cards, in one pile we'd have card one, two, and three, and in the other pile we'd have the reverse of that. So we'd have three, two, and one, right? Now I ask you, when there are three cards, to make two moves, okay? So you have to make two moves. If I make these two moves, if I move that one and that one, then the top cards match. If I make that and that, the top two cards match. And what's happening in effect is that as numbers are moving up through one column, they're moving down through the other one. And it's based on something called modular mathematics or clock arithmetic, and the same techniques of modular arithmetic are actually what makes encryption work on the internet in a very complicated way we don't have time to go into. But by using mathematics, I can create magic tricks, and by creating magic tricks, and very often that's the way that scams work,